Hey everyone, Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season from all of us at RippleTraining.com. Yes, Steve, it's hard to believe that another year has just flown by. We just wanted to take a moment here to wish you all the best and more importantly, to thank you. Your support for Ripple Training over the past year means the world to us. We love bringing you the best training and plugins for Final Cut Pro, Motion, and DaVinci Resolve. We really do. And we want to show our appreciation in two ways. First, we have a very attractive discount going on right now that's 50% off all of our tutorials and plugins. So check out the link below to take advantage of that. And second, Steve and I each want to give you a Final Cut Pro related tip to start off your new year with some creative momentum. That's right, Mark. So I'll go first and share a little something I've been using to share my Final Cut Pro projects with a client. I recently shot an interview for a client who was promoting her new book, and I wanted to make it as easy as possible for her to mark the best parts in order to build my rough cut. For this task, I turned to Frame.io, a service I have used in the past, but I was skeptical that it still worked as it once did, given that Adobe acquired the service four years ago. Well, I am happy to report that it is still the best tool for remote collaboration, particularly because it works seamlessly with Final Cut Pro, even in 2025. If you want to try it out, there is a free option that gives you 2 gigabytes of storage, which is more than enough for small projects. After you've logged in, you'll create a project by clicking this button, then upload one or more videos into it. Here I've created a project that includes several versions of the video I'm working on. In order to share a video, click the Options menu, then Share for Review. In the Share window, click the Link button to copy it. Your client or remote collaborator does not need to have a Frame.io account for them to watch or comment on the video, which is really nice. Now simply text or email them the link. When the link is clicked on, it will open a player where they can watch and comment on the video. Comments are added using the text entry field below the player and appear as colored markers along the bottom of the player and in the comments list to the right. Selecting a marker will jump the playhead to that particular comment in the list. What's even better is that you can have all these comment markers appear directly in your Final Cut Pro timeline. For this to happen, you'll need to open the Mac App Store and download the Free Frame I.O. Video Collaboration app. The next time you launch Final Cut Pro, you'll see a button in the upper menu bar that when clicked on will open the interface as a floating window directly inside Final Cut. Just locate your project and open it. Then locate the shared video with the comments and open that. You'll see the same comment list presented along the right. Before you import the comments into Final Cut Pro, you'll first need to open the project you exported the video from. Move the window where you can see the timeline, then click the Import button. Click and drag the gray comment clip into your timeline. Comments are imported as a compound clip that includes a timecode overlay so you can verify the accuracy of the marker placement against the comment list. In order to do that, click the Link Playheads button. When you click a comment, the playhead in Final Cut Pro will jump to that comment marker. The time codes should match, give or take a few frames. Close the extension window after you finish checking. The comments list will also appear in the timeline index in the notes column, and as you complete each task, you can change the marker status from to do to completed. Okay, so my tip is about trimming multiple stacked titles. I happen to be using here our Ripple Bullets, but it doesn't matter. Any title will do. It's not uncommon to need to stack multiple titles and need to trim them all. So let's say I want all of these to be trimmed shorter, like to here. Well, one option is manually dragging them. And if you have snapping enabled with the N key, they will snap to that. But don't ever do that. That'll take forever. Another option is you could click the edge, the edit point there, and use the keyboard Shift X, which is an extend edit, which will extend in either direction. So I could click each of those, and I'm still doing them one at a time, but with the keyboard shortcut a little bit faster. I'm going to undo that. Another option is the option right bracket key, which will trim the end point. And what's kind of cool about this is that you don't need to touch the mouse at all. Just hold the option key down and hit the right bracket key repeatedly and you can trim them all. Still multiple keystrokes. I'm going to undo that. Or you can select them all. Does require the mouse for that, but then just a single option right bracket will trim them all to the same point at once. Let's undo that. So trimming the end shorter is relatively simple when you want them all to match. But 
What if you want to go longer? Well, you can select them all and try to option right bracket, but it's not going to work. It's just going to trim your next clip. So you don't want to do that. You could select each endpoint and press Shift X in order to move them all over. I'll undo those. You could drag them to the playhead. Uh, all kind of slow. And you might think, well, it's impossible to select multiple endpoints, right? I can select one. If you hold the shift or command key down, you can't select multiple. Like, it's not possible, is it, to select multiple endpoints at the same time? But it is. So here's what you do. The first step is to make them all the same duration. So I'm going to move the playhead to where it's over all of them. I'm going to select them all and I'm going to press option right bracket. And while they're still selected, I'm going to press the back arrow key so that I'm on the last frame of every title. And then I'm going to press the right bracket key. And there I have every endpoint selected. Now I can move my playhead to where I want those all to be and press Shift X for an extend edit. Super fast and easy. The same thing goes for this start. If you want all of these, say, to be extended back in time, what you can do is place the playhead right at the first frame, select them all, press the left bracket key, move the playhead to where you want them to start, and Shift X. So a much faster way to be able to trim all of your titles so that they match each other. Well, we hope these quick tips were really useful. We're already gearing up for a fantastic year ahead with new tutorials and courses, and we can't wait to share them with you. Happy holidays, everybody. We can't wait to see what amazing new creative things you'll make in the new year.